first of all, we're going to start off by looking at how the association between a drug and its receptor controls its extent of receptor occupancy. And we're going to mimic that by asking you guys to be drug molecules and the chairs you're sitting in to function as receptors. Okay? Now we're going to mimic the association of the drug with the chair by controlling how long it takes you to sit down. If you sit down quickly, that means there's rapid association. If you sit down slowly, that means there's a slow association. We're going to mimic dissociation by controlling the time it takes you to stand back up again after you sat down in the chair. Okay? So if the time to stand back up again is long, that would reflect slow dissociation. Okay? And you're going to see that leads to high fatigue line. So first of all, I'm going to ask you to choose a random number between 1 and 5. And don't tell anyone this, just keep it in your head for a second. What I'm going to ask you to do is count that random number out, and then I'm going to ask you to count out another number in your head, which we're going to call T-DAP. That's how many seconds it takes you to sit down. Okay? After you've counted out that T-down seconds, you sit down. Once you've sat down, count another time in your head, let's call that T-up. That's how many seconds it takes you to stand back up again. And we're going to see how changing the time to sit down and the time to stand up controls receptor occupancy. Okay. So first of all, we're going to start out with a fairly moderate affinity interaction. So what I'm going to ask you to do is sit down after one second and get back up again after one second. Okay. So if you'd like to stand up, count out the random number in your head. After one second, sit down. After one second, get back up again. And keep doing that. OK, off you go. So we've got about half of the chairs occupied at any one time, I suppose, with that intermediate affinity. OK, just stop there. Let's try and change the kinetics of ligand binding for a second. Let's switch to a low affinity interaction. Okay. This time, I'm going to ask you to count out five seconds before you sit down. In other words, mimicking a slow association rate. So you count out five seconds before you sit down, and then stand back up again after one second. Okay. So count out the random number. And then five seconds before you sit down, one second before you get back up. Off you go. So we can see on average, they've got very little receptor occupancy. All we've done is slow down the rate of association by taking longer for you guys to sit down. And that's led to low receptor occupancy. Low affinity interaction as a result of a low association rate. It's low receptor occupancy. Okay, thank you. Let's just try and change it again to a high affinity interaction. This time what I'm going to ask you to do is to sit down after one second, um, but remain seated for five seconds. So you stand up again after five seconds. And so I'm going to mimic this time a slow dissociation rate. Okay. So that's going to hopefully lead to a high affinity interaction. So count out the random number in your head first, sit down after one second, remain seated for five seconds. Off you go, please. And you can see straight away, we've got a larger proportion of the receptors occupied than we had in the previous two circumstances. By slowing the dissociation rate of the drug from the receptor, we've increased the affinity of the drug-receptor interaction, and as a result, we've got a higher occupancy of the receptors, the chairs, by the drug molecules. Thank you. Okay, so this time what we're going to do is titrate in the drug and see how the, the affinity of the drug for the receptor affects receptor occupancy. So this time what you're going to do, you're going to bind firstly with a low affinity. So you're going to take five seconds to sit down, and then after one second you're going to get back up again. And we're going to see how many of you it takes to occupy half the chairs. Okay? Everyone clear what you have to do? Okay, let's start there. So I'll just add you in at one at a time and we'll see how, we, how many of the chairs, how many of you it takes to occupy the chairs. Okay, you'd like to start? And next person, and the next person, way off getting any of the chairs occupied at this time, and the next person, we're nowhere near 
occupancy and we've got four people involved so far. Next person, please. And the next one. So we're adding in drug and we're still not getting 50% occupancy. This low affinity interaction is preventing us occupying the chairs. And the last drug molecule, please. Okay, so now we're getting to something like 50% occupancy if we're lucky. It's a very low affinity interaction, so it's required all of you to occupy the chairs half of the time. Let's just stop that, and if you just scoot on back over there, and we'll run it again. Only this time we'll make it a high affinity interaction. So you're going to count out one second, but after five seconds, you're going to get back up again. So count out one second before you sit down, and remain seated for five seconds. Okay? So I'll call you in one at a time. Okay, first molecule, please. Second, and let's have a third one as well. One more. So there, we've just got four molecules there already, and we're already occupying about half the chairs. So this time, with the high affinity interaction, we've only needed four of you to occupy half the chairs. Okay? So demonstrating that the association and the dissociation rates of the drug for the receptor control the affinity of the drug for the receptor, and as a result, control the occupancy of the receptor by the drug. Thank you. Okay, so this time what we're going to do <clears throat> is compare the effect of full agonists versus partial agonists. And to mimic the receptor signaling, what you're going to do is ring the bicycle bell that you have in your hand. Okay? So we're going to do the same type of simulation as we did before. Only this time, you can count to two seconds before you sit down, and after one second, stand back up again. Two seconds before you sit down, one second before you get back up again. Every time you sit down, if you're a full agonist, you ring the bell. So you guys at the end, you three at the end, will be full agonists. Every time you sit down, I'd like you to ring the bell. You three at this end are partial agonists. What I'd like you to do is every other time you sit down, you ring the bell. Okay. And we're going to compare the frequency of bell ringing, which is supposed to mimic the receptor signaling, between the full agonists and the partial agonists. And as we'll see in a little while, that will help us explain, understand some of the other properties of partial agonists. Now, in this exercise, you still need to count a random number out in your head before you start. Okay? So first of all, let's just run the full agonist. If you guys would like to stand up, count out the random number in your head before you start, two seconds before you sit down, after one second, get back up again. And go. If you got to stand up and same thing again, please. Go. Hopefully, what you can see, keep going, but what you can see is the frequency of bell ringing, in other words, mimicking receptor activation, is much less with the partial agonists than we saw with the full agonists. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to simulate the effect of a competitive antagonist. So I need two volunteers to come and be full agonists for me and come and sit down in the receptors. Fantastic, thank you guys. Your role is to function exactly as you've done in the past, count out a random number in your head. Once you've done that, after two seconds, sit down. When you sit down, ring the bell. After one second, get back up again. Start counting in two seconds, sit back down again. You keep doing that. Now I need um, two volunteers to be antagonists. Thank you, that's great, you two. Your role is going to be the same as these guys, except you don't have a random number. I'm going to titrate you in gradually. And you're going to sit in the chair as well. Now you notice we've got less receptors here, so there's going to be a bit of competition for the chairs. So the rules of the game are if someone's sitting in the chair, you're not allowed to sit down. Okay? And if someone's sitting in the chair, you have to start counting all over again. So you're not allowed to push and shove each other out of the way, you just sit down in the chair. Okay? You guys over there are also agonists, and I'm going to titrate you in in a second. So you're going to behave in the same way as these full agonists. You're going to sit down. When you sit down, you're going to ring your bell. Following the two seconds to sit down, one second to sit up, to get back up again exactly the same way. 
Okay? So let's try starting it first of all. So if you guys would like to start, stand up. I will start with you guys um, as agonists on your own to start with. So random number first, then off you go. Okay. Okay, we've got a nice frequency of receptor signal now. So let's add in one agonist. Perhaps I could add in you first. That's it. Sorry, antagonist, not agonist. Oh, got an antagonist. Still got some signaling going on. Another antagonist, please. Frequency of signaling by the receptor seems to have gone down a little bit. So we've demonstrated so far that the competitive antagonists can inhibit the agonists from stimulating the receptor. But because they're competitive, if we now add more agonists, we can overcome the effect of the antagonist. So just like to add in one more agonist molecule. And another agonist molecule, please. Let's get a bit busy there. You notice the frequency of signaling has gone back up again. One more just for fun. Getting a bit crowded, but never mind. See, we've recovered the full, full signaling by the receptor. The effect of the antagonist has been blocked. The effect of the competitive antagonist has been blocked by adding in more agonists. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this time what we're going to do is we're going to look at the effect of irreversible antagonists. I'm going to ask you two to again be full agonists. Sit down after two seconds, get up after one second. Every time you sit down, ring the bell to simulate receptor signaling. I'd like you two to be the irreversible antagonist, please. What I'd like you to do is sit down after two seconds, get back up. Sorry, sit down after two seconds, but after you've sat down, don't get back up again. Okay? So you said they irreversibly bound to the receptor. Okay? You do not dissociate from the receptor. You're not going to ring a bell because you're an antagonist. You're irreversible, so you can stay sitting in the chair. Same rules before apply. If the chair is occupied by someone else, you can't sit down. I'd like you guys over there to be at full agonists again. I'm going to titrate you in afterwards. Okay, so if you'd like to stand up, and we'll start the simulation. Go. Okay, so we've got some nice receptor signaling there going on. Let's add in one antagonist, please. One irreversible antagonist. It's another irreversible antagonist, please. Oh, look, we'll stop the receptor signaling. There's nothing going on anymore. Let's add a few more agonists. So one more agonist. Oh, nothing's happened. Another two agonists, please. Nothing happens. It doesn't matter how much more agonists you add in, the irreversible antagonist is fully occupied the receptor and the agonist is unable to signal. So making a contrast with competitive antagonists, here adding in more agonists does not, does not overcome the effect of the antagonist. Okay. This time what we're going to do is we're going to compare the effect of full agonists and partial agonists. What we're going to try and demonstrate is that partial agonists can antagonize the response to a full agonist. So I'd like you three who are seated at present to be the full agonists. What I'd like you to do is after two seconds sit down and after one second get back up again. Every time you sit down I'd like you to ring the bell. So that's mimicking receptor activation. You're the full agonists every time you sit down going to ring the bell. I'd like you three to be partial agonists, please. What I'd like you to do is follow the same kinetic. Sit down after two seconds, get back up after one. But you only ring the bell every other time you sit down. Okay? Same rules apply as before. There's three chairs, three receptors. You can't sit down if someone else is sitting in the chair. You can sit in any free chair you want to. You don't have to just choose one. It's a free chair you can sit there. Okay? But if someone's sitting there, you can't sit down, 
And so you have to um, wait until you counted the T down again. Okay? Everyone clear what you have to do? Let's give it a go. So if I could ask the full agonist to stand up, think of your random number, and then start. Nice receptor signaling going on there. Let's add in one partial agonist, please. Another partial agonist, please. Another partial agonist. Beginning to see some diminution of the frequency of signaling. We just ask the partial agonist to stand to one side for a second and let the full agonist do it on their own again. So you can see now how much more signaling the full agonist were doing compared to the full agonist and the partial agonist, demonstrating then. The partial agonists could antagonize the effect of the full agonists. Thank you very much.